we will be able to spend the next hour uh, looking at our subject, sharing together, stirring ourselves up. We want you to make comment by text and email. We want you to be involved in this program uh, as we go through it today. And to help me with today's program, my old friend Michael, Michael Cummings. Thank you, Michael, for coming in. Thank you for having me again. You've got a bit of a frog in the throat, haven't you? I apologise to everyone. (laughs) Uh, You were were shouting too much at the Arsenal. No, I know you gave your season ticket. I I know you gave your season ticket up. (laughs) Shouting at the cat. Shouting at the cat. Uh, They never listen, do they? No, No, it's like our our producer. She never listens. Uh, (laughs) But anyway, um, let's, um, let's... begin because what we want to look at today i think is something which um actually covers uh, and, and is a concern for many people what what we're really going to be looking at is dealing with issues from the past yes um it, it's interesting I, I was driving down uh the car down to uh, bournemouth this morning to to speak at morning's bible college and, <coughs> and I, I was listening to um some songs uh, as, as I was going down and praising God. And, and, and one of them was all to do with the future. Yes. Uh, and it's The King is Coming. It's one of my favorite ones. Yeah, the King is Coming, The King is Coming. I've just heard the trumpet sounding. And basically the whole thing is that everything is new. Everything is yeah. finished. Everything is complete. Those that have been forgiven, those that have been healed, they're all there in Christ at, at this time. And so future-wise... It's looking good. Yes, It's yes, looking yes. rosy. Yes, yes. But I was thinking, because I knew what subject we were going to cover today, even now, though, we can, even though yet the future's going to be great, now can be a little bit of a problem if we haven't dealt with the past, if the reality of it is, uh, is, is not with it. Well, what made you start thinking about this subject? Well, in my own family... I have seen the consequences of not dealing with the past in my mother and father's uh, time when they were alive. And uh, as I said to you before, I was brought up with a young man who I thought was my blood brother. Mm. And it turned out he was my sister's child born out of wedlock to a serving American soldier in the 1950s. Uh, in the times when people used to sing, woe is me, shame and scandal in the family. Right. And everything was covered up, everything was hidden. He was brought up believing he was my brother, and I was brought up believing that he was, you know, my younger brother. There was six years difference. And, you know, people gossip, people whisper, people snigger when you walk down the road. And eventually he got to the age of 16 and it all came out. Mm. And the consequences were catastrophic. It caused a major rift and a major split in the family. And I realised the, be- the, the basis of this is, even to some Christians who have said the sinner's prayer, they've been baptised, they've come to the Lord, they may be certain things in their past that they feel shame and guilt about that they just can't deal with. And you see, uh, sometimes we deny the cross by not accepting the true redemptive power of the blood of Jesus. Mm, mm. And I think some people have a job actually saying, Have I been forgiven of this? Am I free from it? And, you know, it's particular, I find, dealing with people in deliverance ministry who have got sexual sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They believe that, you know, that they've gone beyond the pale, that they've just gone too far, they can't be forgiven. I always look at my own example. I did everything a man shouldn't have done. I was probably the biggest sinner that ever walked the earth. And when people say to me, I knew you in the 70s, you was a drunk. I say, yeah, I was. And they said, do you, I said, well, at the time, I enjoyed every drink I ever drank. Yeah. I enjoyed every cigarette I ever smoked. But the Lord set me free from that now. But I can say that my testimony is he set me free from demonic activity and demonic behaviour. Mm. And what he's done for me, he would do for anyone. But you have to go to him. Yeah, and, and, and so the point that you're really making there is you've got to face up. Yes. So it's, like, it's, it's, it's no good just covering it up. No. It's no good just ignoring yeah. it. We, 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 we've got to face it. So let, let's lay some biblical foundation of this. We'll, we'll come back to the practical yeah. side of it. But has all sin, every sin, been dealt with at the cross? Yes. Now, that's, that's a simple yes. answer. Now, the answer is yes. How do we know well, that's the case? If we go to uh, John 17, 
uh, John 17, verse 4, Jesus, the words of Jesus, he said, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. So Jesus finished the work on the cross. If we go uh, a little bit, if we go to Ephesians, if we now go to Ephesians 1, verse 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Mm. So the work is done on the cross. I find, especially in the deliverance ministry, the hardest thing is convincing people they are free. Mm. Sometimes people need a lot of convincing. Well, they say, is it as simple as that? Haven't I got to go through an act of contrition? Haven't I got to go through some form of penance? And I say, well, Jesus went to the cross for you. The, the job is done. Now you've got to walk now in faith and accept the job is done. Mm. And when the devil speaks in your ear and says, ah, but you did this, ah, but you did that, you've got to say, get behind me, Satan, thou art an offence unto me mm. because my Lord and Saviour Jesus has opened the door for eternal life for me. And that's what we have to do. So, I, I mean, that, that's a great verse. I want to read that verse in John 17, uh, again, verse 4. I, I glorify thee on earth, having a Accomplish yes. the work or finish, but it's, it's accomplished the work yes. uh, the, the, which thou hast given me to do. And of course, he came to save. Yes, he did. He came to give his life a ransom for many. That's what we're told. And if that word of God says, I've accomplished that, yes. then he has done that. Yes. It, it, it is finished, it, it is completed. Yeah. Well, you know, what we have to do, we have to walk in the light. If I can bring in another scripture mm -hmm. from 1 John 1, verses 7 to 10, it says, But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. Mm -hmm. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us, our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not with us. Mm. So, you know, um, it's very hard sometimes. Maybe church is a part of the problem because a sinner goes into a church, he's troubled, he's worried and he wants to be free from these burdens. He's read in the Bible, come to me all you that are burdened and weary laden and he says, right, I'm going to come to you today and he goes into a place where he thinks he sees perfect people living a perfect existence yeah. and he feels almost uh, like he doesn't belong there mm. and he thinks, you know what that is, that's because I did this and you know, if I go in here, they're going to find me out. And, mm -hmm. or, no, I don't feel comfortable here. And again, those verses in 1 John, the, yes. the, the forgiveness of our sin is not dependent on the amount that I confess. It no. is dependent on our confession, but not the amount I confess or how deep the yes. repentance, there is repentance. It's dependent on his justness and his faithfulness. In other words, our forgiveness is dependent on him, yes. not on us. Well, you mentioned a song earlier. One of my favourite songs is So Freely. Right. And it says so freely, not dependent on our part, right. but only dependent on his part. You see, we can never be free of sin as human beings. We do not have the ability to be free of sin. Only Jesus can set us free from sin. Yeah. Through the atonement he made on the cross, the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin, sin. from the world. Yeah. And see, some people are trying to do the job, I believe. I think they're trying to do the job almost by purging themselves, yeah. or trying to purge themselves, when really all they need to do is say, Lord, I have fallen short of your glory. I know I have. I stand before you a sinner. I can do nothing about my past sins, they are done. And that's another thing, you see, once, yes. you know, once the past is done with, it's done with. When you revisit the scene of the crime, you're denying the cross. Mm. Mm. We're, we're, we're just beginning to, uh, to, to move into this. What I want to encourage you to do is to text us in 07781. 472647 or email us in live at revelationtv.com. Please take part. Have you got problems in dealing with the past? Have you got questions over that completed, finished 
work of Jesus. Don't, don't be afraid. Don't, don't be scared. I, I don't read names out to, to embarrass people. If you prefer a <coughs> name not to be read out, that's not the issue. But if you've got something which you really are struggling with, then contact us today. 07781 472647 live at revelationtv.com and uh, let's uh, get involved together on this very, very important subject. Comments, questions, needs, we will look forward Amen. to receiving them. I, I, I guess one of the issues that some people have, Michael, is that they feel God could never forgive me for that or God yes. could never... But when, when I became a Christian, when, when I took those steps to receive Christ into my life, okay, uh, he, he knew all of, you know, he, 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 in one sense he's received us, not we received him, but putting it in our language. When I took that step to receive Christ in my life, did he know everything about me at that point? I mean, in other words, is there anything that actually is hidden from him? No, nothing at all. If we go to Psalm 139, please. Go to Psalm 139, verses 1 to 6. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down-sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. Thou com compassest my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge... It's too wonderful for me. <laughs> it is high. I cannot attain unto it. Mm. Lord, the Lord knows everything. You see, I think that what the Lord does, the Lord waits. The Lord waits. He knows what we've done. You see, as one of the things I learned first when I went into ministry, that if God really punished us for what our sins deserve, there won't be many of us walking about in the earth. I now. don't think there'd be any of us. I don't think there'd be any of us walking about. <laughs> You know, uh, so God is so merciful mm. that he waits for us. And as mm. soon as we say, look, Lord, and we come to him with this sin, no matter how heinous, he releases his mercy, releases his love, and releases his healing onto us via the anointing of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and brings healing into our emotions. I don't know about your particular past, but as the, the viewers have known who have seen me before, I was once a very broken man. Mm. You know, who would have thought I would have ever come to the Lord? All I thought I was going to end up with was in the neck, to be honest with you, because mm. I thought that was going to be my portion in life. But the Lord waited for me, and he waited a long time for me. Mm. Uh, the healing he gave me as a small boy, I went and lost through my actions in teenage years, through my own, I suppose want of a better word is hedonism mm. through my uh, exploits looking after pleasure and the Lord waited for me and the Lord used me the Lord used all my life experience to try and reach others who, who believe they are mm. separated from God mm. so we're, we're not telling God anything so, so trying to hide from God I can understand that sometimes we might not want to stand up in the middle of a church oh, yes, meeting yes, and yes, tell, yes. tell everything we may choose one or two people yes, we can yeah. trust but you know but our biggest problem is hey you know what will God think of me yeah. but God knows about it anyway yeah. and, and, and you know, from the, what you're reading there from Psalm 139, right the way back from the beginning, he yes. knew it all. So at that moment, as we see it, that moment in time, when we first came to know the Lord, when we received him, he already knew everything about us. So why, why do we want to hide? I mean, you, know, you, you, you have it right back at the beginning, don't you, where Adam and Eve hid Genesis 3 yeah right yeah, yeah. But, but, so why do we want to hide these things from God why do we want to bring them well, into his presence if we go back to the garden and we look at Genesis 3 the Genesis 3 defense put the fig leaf on and hide behind a tree defense yeah. I don't know what you're talking about God who me I wasn't about they're nothing to do with me you know that defense still is used today people will usually when they're caught out blame society blame their own personal circumstance blame somebody else who was with them at the time, yeah. say they put, oh, he put me up to it, it yeah. wasn't my idea. And that is, since the fall of man, that's how it's been. 
that people are looking to cover up what they've done. And it's down to Satan, because Satan pours into our lives so much condemnation, so much shame, so much guilt. That's why in Romans, where it says there is therefore no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus, that is a very important scripture, because it's actually saying, look, you belong to the Lord now, there is no condemnation. Old Dave Bilber sings that song, I am a new creation, creation no, more no more in condemnation. In condemnation and yeah. that's the truth of it all. Mm. But you see, we look at our sins as a constant barrier, a constant barricade uh, between us and God. Mm. We, we have this phrase, though, don't we? Um, the unforgivable yes. sin. Yes. And I know this causes problems to some people yes, yes. i mean mind you i often say the person that comes and asks me ha have i f c uh, committed the unforgivable sin i know the fact that you asked me you haven't done it you know no, that's true <laughs> that's true that's very true <laughs> but uh, i mean there are there are an awful lot of christians out there that are thinking okay but and and, and we all have our list don't we yes of, yes. of, of the worst sins and whatever mm. is number one for us on that list yes, yes. which is often sexual sin to one yes, degree yes, or another of um we say oh that, that's the unforgivable sin you know god god god, no. god can't deal with that but <coughs> you know is there any sin that i have committed that cannot be forgiven in christ well Let's have a look at sin, the way humans look at sin and the way God looks at sin. Please. God looks at sin as all sin as being abhorrent to him. Uh, in, on the world, the difference between sin on the world is the consequence of that sin. Naturally, if you, if you steal a loaf of bread out of Sainsbury's, you may get fined by the magistrate, you yeah. might get let off. If you kill someone, we know the consequences of that sin. It's terrible. But God looks at all sin and deals with all sin mercifully. It's people, it's us. We look at certain sins. I had a woman say to me once, well, I'm not as bad a sinner as her because she had an affair with a married man. The man I slept with wasn't married, so my sin's not as bad as her. Cause <laughs> Excuse I didn't me laughing, yeah, but that, it's that's so what illogical, she said. isn't it? That's what she said. Yes. I never committed adultery, I just fornicated. And I said, you need to read the Bible. Yeah. You need to read. Look, this is the unpardonable sin. Yeah. If we have a look what actually happened... Uh, as we know, Jesus is casting demons out. He's casted, uh, cast the blind. Where are you? Which scripture? Uh, sorry, yeah. uh, Matthew 12. Yeah. And we're looking at verses 31 and 32. And I'll tell you before what's happened. Uh, Jesus has cast the blind and dumb spirit out. The mm -hmm. scribes and Pharisees are watching, obviously envious because they don't have the authority and the power to do such things. Now, when people see sometimes the work of God and they haven't had that move in their own church sometimes they do get envious and they question the person who's come there who has the anointing to do it and that's what they're doing so it's a typical thing to say he's using Beelzebub prince of demons to cast out that demon mm. in other words they're accusing the work of the Holy Spirit the miraculous healing and deliverance power of God of being something that comes from the occult right that's basically what they're doing by Beelzebub, prince of demons. And Jesus says, Wherefore I say unto you, All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Now, I believe God, spends his life sending the Holy Spirit to us at different times in our lives, telling us about him, telling us about Jesus, and telling us how we can be free. Uh, naturally, if we speak against the power of God and we speak against the Holy Spirit, I'm always worried about these so-called Christian groups that don't believe in the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. that believe in the Father only, or maybe, you know, believe in the Father and Son but not the Spirit. Uh, certain religions say the Holy Spirit is somebody it shouldn't be. You know, they put it down to the work of a prophet. Mm -hmm. We have to be very, very careful. I think if we reject God all our lives when he's calling us, or we've known the Lord and turned away from the Lord, and as it says in Hebrews, we've run out of sacrifice for sin, I think that's another way of grieving the Holy Spirit, and who knows, maybe even committing 
the unforgivable sin. Mm. But I think it's, it, as I would see that, it's, it's very, very difficult to do, yes. Michael. And, and you almost have to be totally determined to do it. I, 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 I suppose I... It's got to be willful. Yeah, I, think, I, see, yeah. I have a slightly different yeah. take on, on, on that. I, 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 to, to me, where, where you're coming from on that is, 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 yes, I think we can play fast and lose too often yes. with God. But if... If we are those that that have come to know him and, and if we are those that have had our hearts softened towards him, yes. we are not going to go down that road no. of, of committing the unforgivable sin, no. whatever it may be. Yes. Um, and and, and, and be, if, if we're concerned about doing it, we haven't done it. I thought I committed it as a child when I used to lay in my bed as a young boy and get swear words against God. Right. And I used to thousands a day, yeah, yes. shouting at me, and I thought, well, I can't be forgiven. Yeah. And I remember one day, some guru in India said the world was going to end at 12 o'clock midday. And it was in the school holidays, and I went to a <laughs> playground, and there were some sewer pipes. Yeah. And this is a funny thing, I got in one of these pipes about 12 o'clock, and the heavens opened up when it rained. <laughs> it's true. And I fought with the flood and Noah. Yeah. And I thought, God, I ain't said goodbye to my mum. Yeah. You know, and I waited in this pipe and it belted down the rain. And I thought, well, this is it then. My, yeah. my, my, and of course, the sun came out about half hour later. <laughs> I thought, well, it's not a bad world after all. Right. But one thing, I, can I just look Dude. at the scripture? Isaiah 55, verse 6, tells us to seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Mm. And I think if we are being led away from the Lord and we have problems and we're doubting we're questioning maybe we're being evangelised by somebody who's from another religion or another sect who's mm -hmm. telling us look it's, it's okay. not do, it's, this, yeah, do, it, do yeah. that do that you know I think we should go back to the Lord at all times test mm. everything we're told mm. to test everything aren't we mm. I, I think yeah and, and I think also that especially is for people that as of yet don't know him, no. but, but they get opportunities yes. as they go through their life to, they hear about the Lord, they hear about his word, they hear about forgiveness and they reject, reject, reject. I think there may come a time yes. when God says, that's it. Well, you know, there's a saying in Romans about the retrobate spirit. Mm. And I, the way I've read a retrobate spirit, it's almost that, that's it. Yeah. I'm turning me back on you. Yes. Get on with it. Yes. Choose the path you've chosen. Yes. I will no longer communicate yeah. with you. And I think that that must be uh, the unpardonable sin. It, 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 it's knowing, isn't yes. it? It's knowing that because those Pharisees knew what Jesus was yes. doing. They were jealous. Yeah, exactly. And, and, yeah. and they were speaking out to the crowd because yes. they couldn't do it. No. They had to find a way to explain to the crowd what was going on yeah. so that nothing, you know, so, so that they wouldn't feel belittled. And they knew there was a special, there was yes. something special. They knew it was yeah. of God, but knowing it was of God, they called it of the devil. And I think that if we ever get to that stage, yeah. we really are in trouble. Well, it's almost like the man with the wooden, withered hand in the synagogue, and he's been going there for years, mm. and the scribes and the rabbis in the synagogue have not been able to heal him. Yes. And Jesus comes in on the Sabbath and restores his hand. The first thing they do is bring the law. Yes. Oh, he's healed on the Sabbath. This man's not of God, he's healed on the Sabbath. So, you know, the power of God when it comes down, I think it's no respecter of men, times, places. That's right. It just does the it job. It does, and God moves. Doesn't God it? moves. Listen, we've got a whole number of questions coming in, and one of the things I always feel <coughs> that we, uh, we run out of time and don't have time to deal with no. some of these questions, so I, I'd, I'd like to deal with some of them. Uh, they may take us down different avenues, yes, but yes, we'll yes. go wherever, uh, wherever it leads us to today. Um, uh, this is from Dave. He says, this area is always nagging me uh, from the point of view of can I be cursed from previous generations' misbehaviour? Now, I know that's yes. slightly beyond, but I, if we could give a simple answer to that, that's probably a whole programme in itself. Yes. But we're talking about forgiveness for things that we have done yes. in this lifetime. Is there a problem where we could be cursed from previous generations? And if we can... Is there an answer to that as well, I guess, is the important yes, question. Yes, well, we can be cursed from previous generations, especially if we've had mothers and fathers and grandparents in the occult 
who have practiced witchcraft and various things. But, you know, in Ezekiel, I I think it's Ezekiel 19, it says the soul that sins, it's the soul that sins that that will die. So what we have to do, we can, you know, it's not a bad thing to repent of the sins that your mothers and fathers and that did. Mm. And, you know, let the Lord know that you're no part of that, that you're separate from that, you've accepted him. You want nothing to do with them. Uh, What they did, you have nothing to do with their sins. So you can be set free. And it is the soul that sins that dies. Mm. In in other words, the death of Jesus Christ that we talked about as as being accomplished, being finished, is finished for my life now, but it's also finished for the past lives. Yes. And it's coming into the reality of that, and it's laying it to rest, isn't it? Yes. That if we are unhappy with something from the past, if if we've got doubts... Let's, as you say, specifically lay it to rest yes. in Christ, realise he, he has dealt with it, and, and, and that we can come to rest on that. If I thought of my past all the time, I would walk away from the Lord. Because, you know... Explain that. Well, oh. basically, the things I was involved in, the things I did, right. uh, you know, I was a young man out of control, right. really. And, uh, you know, the, it was only by the grace of God that I haven't got a criminal record, yes. really, to right. be honest with you. Other people were not as lucky as me. But God even deals with that and forgives that, doesn't he? Of course. Even, even, if, even if it's still there on your, yeah. on your papers, So God I think, it. don't look back. Right. Don't look back. You see, it's interesting because, I, I mean, bring in myself because, uh, you know, that, and there are some people watching that will be like you. Yes. I have to say, I mean, I was saved when I was 16. Right. And quite honestly, I hadn't done, in my, ter- in my eyes, a lot of wrong. No. Therefore, I wasn't really delivered from no, all of this no. stuff. So I could look back in my past and, and that's it. Well, mm. I was right. But what we've got to realise is, is it's not just what we've done. Is it, it's who we are. Yes. And, and whether we've done a lot or not done a lot. Yeah. And, and we can we could think, oh, well, I, I'm all right. You know. yeah. But in actual fact, we do know, need to know that because of what I am, that's been dealt with yes, completely. Yes, yes. It's, uh, it's not about personal sin. It's about personal acceptance that Jesus Christ has, has done it for yeah. you. Now, if he's done it for, for Doug and he's done it for Michael and he's done it for whoever he's done it for out there, he will do it for anyone. Amen. But you have to say, I need you, Lord. Yeah. Will you come, please? In other words, it is done, but I have to make it real yes. in my life today. That, yeah. That's the key. It, 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 I, I can do nothing to, no. to, 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 to do any more. It's done, yes. but it has to become real to me today. When I first became a Christian, I had a dream one night, and there was a, a void of blackness. Not darkness, right. blackness. Yeah. And if you like, I was sort of floating in this void, looking around, and all of a sudden a door opened, and the brightest light poured through that door and came towards me. Then the door shut. And I thought to myself, what does this mean, Lord? And it means when the door's open, you have to walk through it. Yeah, yeah. Not pontificate and hang about and think, well, perhaps I'll come back next week. Yeah. You've got to walk there, through it. There's the opportunity. Yeah, you can take the opportunity. Dave was talking about his sins from the generations yeah, yeah. ago. Gene has another problem. Right. Gene says this, I believe God can forgive anything we commit before we are saved. Right. But what about a serious sin after we have been saved. Well, that comes into the area, as I see it, as backsliding. Now, we can go back to the Lord when we've committed sins. You see, I know this is probably not the right thing to say, but when we fall off a bike, <laughs> we have to get on and ride it again, don't we, or we give yeah, up. Yeah. Now, if we've committed a sin once we've saved, and yes, there are people out there, who've committed sins since they've been saved. We know of very high-level church leaders in America who have had various problems in their ministries. I'm not going to name any names. Thank you. But we know that there are people out there who have had that sort of thing. And some uh, main big pastors are going through that at the moment. But you see, with God, he's always there. Come before the throne of grace to obtain mercy Mm. in time of need. That's what we must do. Do you know the question I would ask, Gene? What? Gene, when Jesus died, how many of your sins were in the future? You see, we come in time. Yep. And in time, we say, uh, you know, on, on this day, you know, say it was the 1st of January 1995, I got saved. Right, right. 
On the 1st of January 1995, I got saved, therefore all my sins prior to that are forgiven. But all my sins after that, maybe not. But hang on a minute. When Jesus died, all of your sins, including the ones yes. that you appear in the past, were future. So why, why the difference? And I think we really need to see that. Because God is eternal, isn't he? He's past, present and future. Therefore, he knows all of those things. Yes, yes. And, and, and so it's important to see that his blood is, and, and, and his sacrifice and what he said is just as real for after I've seen, if I come the right way, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin. I was talking to a lady once and had a heated debate with her. Because I spoke about David and I spoke about Psalm 51. Right. And I said, the prophet Nathan walks in and says, you know, there's a man in this kingdom who's so evil. He sent a man to the front row of battle to die so he could have his wife. Yeah. And David said, well, let me know who he is and I'll sort him out. And he said, well, it's you. <laughs> now, what did David say? Psalm 51, verse 17 the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, thou will not despise. Yes. So out of our brokenness, he heals us. If right. we say, all right, Lord, it wasn't much and I'm born again. So really, Forget I don't it. need yeah. to repent this. Yeah. It was just a bit of a slip. I slipped up a little bit. No, but David had a broken and contrite mm. heart and God restored him. And even murder. Even murder? I know. Moses? I know. Moses killed the Egyptian overseer? I know. It, you see, I, I, I think sometimes we can read the Bible with a bit of a, a, yeah. a, a glossy view, yes, don't yes, we? Yeah. But, but these guys committed serious mm. sins. Yes, they did. And yet they knew repentance. They do. I mean, I always think of Peter. Yes. I, I mean, Peter, you know, we, we, so I think sometimes... They, people try and downplay that verse but he denied his lord with oaths and curses yes now it wasn't very pleasant what no. was coming out of his no. mouth no, no, no. and yet jesus made a special point of going to him and restoring yes. him why because he'd gone out and wept bitterly yes yes Yes. And, and, and I think we need to see that yes it does need that contrast but there is no sin that God is not able well, to forgive. I, I remember the, the person I had an argument over this. She said, no, no, no. David can't be forgiven because he's not born again. And I said, well, hold on. He was an anointed, appointed, chosen Absolutely. king. Yeah. God himself set aside his brothers in favour mm. of him. And, you know, what it says, And look, deliver me, verse 14, deliver me from blood guiltness, O God, the God of my salvation. And it says, you know, in verse 16, For thou desirest not sacrifice, else I would give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. Mm. So God is saying, I'm not looking for an atonement. I'm not looking for you to go and sacrifice a goat for me. No. I'm looking for this. Your heart. That's what yes. I'm looking for. And I think that's what we need to see. If there are any out there today that are suffering from the past... That, that's what we need to see, yes, does it? Absolutely. That, that, that to come and to own up before God and to be broken over it, whatever it is, to be broken over it and, and see what God promises to do for it. Can I give you another scripture? You can give Psalm me as many Psalm as you like. Psalm 32, verses 1 to 5. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, mm, whose sin is covered. Covered. Now, how do you cover a sin? I know, yes. How do you cover it? Yes. Only God can do that. Absolutely. It's we can't cover it. it. It's covered it with the blood. Yes. That's yeah. how he's covered it. Yeah. He said, Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity. Read that again because that right. is so important. Psalm 32 verse, I'll start from the beginning. Yeah. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Mm. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. Now this is very important, the third verse. Yes. When I kept silence, yes. my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day night, all the day long. So when I didn't confess my sins, I felt tormented. And what that verse tells us is if I keep silent about my sin, if I try and hide it yes. and pretend it's not there, there are serious consequences. Amen. I mean, the, the, this, this would be 
uh, physical consequences, yes. it may be emotional consequences. Torment. It's torment. torment. Because it says, you know, my body wasted away. Yes. I mean, in other words, the, he, 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 he was, you know, he was dying. Well, he doesn't want to eat. He no. doesn't want to drink. He wants to lie on his bed. What happens when people get depressed? They don't want to get up in the morning. They don't want to go out and meet the world. They want to stay at home and watch Jeremy Kyle and, and programs like that and get more depressed. <laughs> You, know, you said that, yeah, I never. No. Yeah. They could watch Revelation TV right. and actually get absolutely ecstatic. Far better to watch Revelation TV. <laughs> yeah. The truth will set you free. Amen. You know? Simply but, the truth. But, you know, when we go back, f verse 5, this is wonderful, Doug. Yeah. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, yeah. and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Mm. By confession, the act of confession, the act of saying, Lord, I've fallen short. Mm -hmm. Not not praying for hours on end, you know, not, not going into deep religious text, but just being honest with the Lord, mm. you know. It, I mean, that is, I mean, there's such a contrast there, isn't there? And, and, and it's what we're saying to people today is, is, is acknowledge your sin before God. Yes. If you feel you need help, find somebody you can trust that's not going to hold those things against you. Yes. Um, uh, but, but, but it's God that does the work. Sometimes it helps if there's somebody else because they can relate these scriptures and relate this to, to, to you. But in the end, it's God that does the work. When I kept silent... <coughs> that's it. There were problems. problems. When I acknowledged and confessed, yes, yes. God came in and blessed. Look, look, I look at it this way. Whatever I do, if I go into my uh, living room and I shut all the doors and pull all the curtains so that the neighbours can't see what I'm doing, God can always see. Yes. Because the curtains don't keep God out. No. The door doesn't keep God out. No. So not the, even the darkness keeps God out. Not even the darkness out. keeps God out. So, you know, we know that whatever we do in the darkness will be exposed by the light. So... It's best to come clean and say, all right, Lord, what I did was ridiculous. It was foolish. It was willful. It was whatever it was. But now I'm going to confess it to you. But with the understanding that, that in that confession, that's the one step, that confession, that brokenness, if necessary, that is the one step I need to take to be forgiven. Yes. And if I hold on to that sin, yes. if I don't confess it, if I no. don't acknowledge it, if I don't own up to it, then the full and complete forgiveness and deliverance from it is not there, no. is it? No, that's right. I, you know, being in the deliverance ministry, sometimes people have to go through a lot of soul searching, uh, a lot of uh, deliverance prayers, the casting out ministry, when sometimes simple confession would be sufficient for mm -hmm. them. You see, what, what you say to the devil is you have an open door because I'm not willing to confess this, so you have come in. I've done something that I've hid and I've given you authority over that sin and over that part of my life. Now you're coming in and you're bringing other temptations for me to do other things and you're trying to take control of my life. Soon as we say, that's it, Jesus, on you, <laughs> the devil has to go. Yes. He has no authority to stay. What did Jesus say? In, in, in Luke 11, I beheld Satan fall like lightning from mm. heaven. I give you authority. I give you authority. Mm. So we accept Jesus' authority. We exercise Jesus' authority. And we tell the enemy to go. Mm. And we can only do that if we're repentant. Right. Because the devil doesn't want us to repent. No. And, 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 and also that we believe Scripture. Yes, we have to believe because the Word Because you see, of God. The, 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 what... The more I sit there, I mean, you know, the, we, we've just read a few scriptures today. And they're powerful, aren't they? They're so powerful, powerful. because they're so clear yeah. as to what they're saying. Um, and, and, and if I believe that and act upon that, then the reality is going to come yes. to me. Yeah. And I, I know that I, I, there's so many people carry stuff around. I mean, I mean Hugh from Northern Ireland, uh, I, I think he describes it very well when he says, people are beasts of burden. Yes, yes, yes. In, in, in yeah, quotes, yeah. he's not calling people beasts, obviously. <coughs> they carry items like fear, anger, hate around with them without even knowing that they are doing so. No. People are so adept at carrying sin around with them, it is, it, it is so compatible with us. 
we must, th- we must throw off these things like filthy, dirty rags at the foot of the cross of Christ because our birth and growth as Christians depends on it. People must let go. Absolutely. How true? Because... We, we can be like beasts of burden. Yes. And, and it, I think that's a wonderful picture. Mm. You know, and I suppose an ass sometimes, I mean, I wouldn't like to talk about you, but me uh. sometimes, you know, an ass you are. You know, yes. and you're hanging on to all these things and you're carrying all these yes. things when, you know, when Jesus says we could deal with it. Well, you know, if we take fear as one of those things, fear would stop us confessing sin because we don't want to be exposed. Fear would say, what happens once I've confessed it? How are people going to react towards me? Mm -hmm. You know, I like the scripture in James, James 5, verse 16, confess your faults to one another that you may be healed. Mm. And that doesn't mean that you go up to a stranger. That's right. I think it's very important because that was in the context of the church, wasn't it? Yes, yes. You know, you you find someone who uh, has wisdom. And you can trust. You can trust that someone's not going to gossip about you after you've confessed it. Yes. And you ask this person to pray with you, to intercede Mm. on your behalf, Mm. uh, to explain the nature of your sin and the consequences Mm. of your sin and explain the scriptures how God will bring you back from that sin into the light. Mm. Let's get through a few more emails before we uh, run out of time. Um, J.W. Nick, my, my old mate Nick. Hi, Nick. Please, you're still with us. Uh, great to have you with us. You'll enjoy next week's program. Make sure you tune in. I'll tell you about that in just a minute. Uh, hello, Doug. I'm sure uh, we all know ones who continually revisit past mistakes. There's a beautiful expression found uh, at Isaiah 38:17, where that's where the Lord says, I've put my sins yes, yes. behind your back. Yeah. One scholar said about this verse, you have made my sins as if they hadn't happened. Now, I, I don't quite agree with Nick that I know what he's saying mm. um, because it, it, it's not making sins as though they didn't happen it's Jesus knowing fully that they've happened yes. but he says I will I will forgive I will put yes, them out yes, of the way yes. but that's what he's done isn't it yes that's exactly what he's done yeah. I always uh, liken the story of Catherine Kuhlman many many years ago when she had problems in her ministry and she said she came out of a Uh, a meeting and there was no visible anointing of the Holy Spirit there and she Mm. realized she was now separated from God and she said she walked down at the back of the auditorium where she was preaching and in America it says the sign dead end (laughs) and she went to this dead end and she said well I can't go no further Lord and she repented of her sins and she said she heard the the Lord say to her they never happened yeah yeah and she went back you have to when we confess sins especially sexual sins, and I do say this because I do have some experience on this, we have to put things in place. Yes. We have to, you know, uh, it's a bit like the guy who wants to give up drinking. He has to stay at the pub the next night. Yes, yeah. Not, Frame. you know, and no, no. we have to put things in place when we yeah. confess. Yeah, it, it, we, 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 it, we begin to walk that yes. narrow way. You know, that, that confession is finding that narrow yes, path. Yes. We have to walk that narrow way and not look at things that could, no, could affect no. us in, in whatever yeah. way we're coming from. Absolutely. Uh, hi, Doug. Uh, great seeing Michael back again. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah well, you've you got one fan anyway. Yeah, okay. good. He's very interesting. Yeah, I know, that's why I invite him on. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to say how vital it is to help others to escape the bondage of sin and oppression by wicked spirits through the power of Jesus as Redeemer as we walk in a world full of entrapment and snares. Uh, blessings, Mike. That's true, because that's what we're seeking to do today, to bring the reality of Scripture yeah. to people, to say, guys... We're not setting ourselves up as, as better than you. We're not mm. setting ourselves up as, as the perfect you know, ones. But what we're saying is here are some reality scriptures. Let each one of us walk in the yes, good yes, of, yes. Of, 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 of these ones. Amen. Um, uh, good program. I think this, you were just touching on something um, uh, about uh, just here about we have to put things in place. Uh, how about paying back like Zacchaeus the tax collector did? Do we always have to do that? Well, I believe if we can do it, we should do it. I believe, you know, sometimes... I always remember a, a wonderful story about Michael Winner when he was in public school, the film director. Yeah. He, he admitted that he stole a postal order out of another boy's pocket. And he said that as he got into middle age, he felt guilt about it. And he actually found out through the school records who this boy was, how old he was and where he lived. 
And Michael Winner worked out the equivalent of the, the £4 postal order and sent the guy £600 in the post. Woo! <laughs> now, but he said, after he'd done it, he felt yes. free. Yes. Now, if we can restore, yes. and we can do things to restore, unfortunately with sin... Sometimes we sometimes done things, the consequences sometimes are sometimes we've we done can't. things for yes. people who are no longer alive. Yes. They're living in different parts of the world. Yes. And really sometimes if we went up to them and said, I'm sorry, they may think you're you're a complete lunatic because they may have forgotten about it. And, and that's a good point because the thing with Zacchaeus <coughs> is those people were there and, and yes. I'm sure there were more people, but all of those that were there and he saw and he knew, he restored. Amen. And and it's you do what you can do, yes. yes. And, and I think also I would add, as God convicts you, yes. in other words, I don't think you have to do it as a religious no. thing, but as the Spirit of God convicts you, yeah, Funny, restore where you can. Before I was a Christian, I'd been to church, but before I'd given my life to the Lord, I was a plumber by trade. And one day I got a phone call from a guy who asked me to come and plumb a washing machine on for him, in Norbury, and it was in Norbury. When I went there, he was a captain in the Salvation Army. And I put this washing machine in for him, and he said, how much do I... And I think I charged him six pound. I was there 20 minutes, yeah. and I charged him six pound. I realised the man didn't have six pound on him. He went to one of his neighbours and borrowed six pound to pay me. I said, thanks very much, because I was a man with three young children. I needed to earn a living. As I was walking down the road, the Lord convicted me, and I started crying. And I put the six pound in an envelope and posted it back through his letterbox. Mm. And of course, when I got home, my wife went spare. I thought I was foolish and silly. But when you're convicted, I had conviction that this man was serving the Lord. I realised what it was. He was serving the Lord as a, in a mighty way. And really, I, I should have plumbed his washing machine for nothing. And right. That's what I did in the end. Right. And I realised it was the conviction of the Lord. Conviction is such a powerful thing. Yes. Because see, what conviction says is, look, I tell you what to do. By doing this act, I'll restore you. Mm. Do this and I'll restore you. Mm. So if you have to pay someone back or do an act of, of kindness to someone, you feel so much better for mm. them. Noel says, uh, hello, Doug and guest. Um, I have a problem with joining a church or expecting what the church stands for. When I was younger, I felt uh, excluded when I attended church, even though I wanted to understand God's word. So I guess there's a problem there which maybe mm. needs to be dealt with at, at, at some point. Even now, I've tried to find somewhere for fellowship. However, they seem to be closed in their belief in what really is happening in the real world. I know, looking back in my life, that God has been with me, even though I've taken many wrong turns. But I do not understand why God has been with me, as I have never properly asked for forgiveness until three years ago. Is, is, is there a sense in, yes, God is with us? And those, as we make a response to him, we pray a sinner's prayer or whatever, something begins, but when we really confess and deal with it, that there becomes a, 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 a deeper. Is, is that how you would put it? Well, we all say the sinner's prayer in one form or another. We can't find the sinner's prayer in the Bible. We can find Psalms and certain scriptures that may sound similar to the sinner's prayer. But what God is really looking at is a, a willingness for change. Mm -hmm. And it seems like this uh, gentleman here may have suffered some rejection in his life. May, that's why he feels maybe somewhat isolated and excluded. I felt that for many years of my life. But God will take that away. But you have to be bold enough to take a step forward. Mm. You see, people don't accept you straight away. Some people need to get to know you, especially yes. in a church setting. Yes. And, 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 and maybe the bad experience yes. of the past Needs, needs, that may be something that needs to be dealt with. Yes. Maybe needs to forgive others, uh, you know, that gave a bad, bad yes, experience. So, so, so that th there can be, as it were, a new beginning mm. and can look at church today in, in a different light. Well, one thing about being in the deliverance ministry, I remember judge not or she be judged. So yes. people come and tell me all sorts of things and I've had to learn never to judge them, mm. never to say... Oh, what a terrible thing. Never to measure or evaluate the level of their sin. Just say, okay, let's put it to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. how I deal with things now. Yeah. yeah. And I think, what was the name of the gentleman again? Noel. 
Noel, I believe that if the Lord is calling you, you will find a church. Try not to let the bad experiences of the past hinder you in mm. finding a church, because Satan would like that to keep hindering you so you never find a church. So you're always nearly there, but not quite there. Uh, the way it's written, it may well be a woman. It's, it, yeah. it may be the feminine, Noel. Uh, oh, sorry, well, if we've called you a man and you're well, a woman, well, please sorry. please forgive us. That's, that's my fault. I gave you yeah, yeah. the wrong information. Uh, Peter writes in, back to the unforgivable sin. Um, Hi, guys. Do you agree with these thoughts on the unforgivable sin? Romans one twenty tells us the man will be without excuse. The work of the Holy Spirit is to convict us of sin and draw us to the Lord Jesus. Psalm 103 verse 9 says he will not always strive after us. The example of Pharaoh shows us that God gave him ample opportunity, but Pharaoh refused to trust him and God and harden his heart. If we reach that point, we have committed the unforgivable sin. And tragically, we will go to a lost eternal uh, because we have grieved the Holy Spirit in rejecting him. The great thing is that if we are concerned, we have committed the unforgivable sin. We have not because the Holy Spirit is at work within us. I think probably that was very much very good. what we said, wasn't it? I think it was greatly put. Yeah. I think one of the things of uh, the unpardonable sin is totally rejecting the Holy Spirit. And, you know, when the calling is on your life, completely walking away from the call mm -hmm. and never accepting the call. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that was well put. Yeah. Um, Ronnie asks, um, I know we have to own up to God, but what about people? Can we say, Father, forgive me, mm. and not tell the person you have sinned to about what you have done? Can I tell you of a scenario I found yeah. out about? I'm not going to mention any names. Okay. And the people are not watching, so they won't know what I'm talking about. Uh, I was told a testimony of a lady that came from another country to England to live. And in her previous country, she'd actually been a prostitute working in a brothel. While in England, a very beautiful lady, she met a highly successful businessman who fell in love with her. She never told him that she was once a prostitute. They got married and had three children, lived a very luxurious lifestyle and were very happy. Suddenly, someone come from her old country and recognised her in the street and started making inquiries about her, what she was doing. Went to other people who was in her previous community and before you know it, they had traced down the parents of the man she was married to. Mm -hmm. And through innuendo in it initially, we think she may be. And then eventually, it got to the man and he questioned his wife and his wife said, yes, I was a prostitute. The man divorced her. Her life fell apart. She lost custody of her three children. And he said to her, I would have loved you no matter who you was. And I would have forgiven you for being a prostitute. But I can't forgive that you lied to me. Mm. And he divorced her on the strength of her keeping a secret. You see, I've always seen secrets. And I've seen loads in my own family. Loads in my own family. And what the devil does to a secret is turn it into full-blown lies and deceit mm. over the course. So, and the longer it takes to deal with it, the harder it is to mm. deal with it. Yes, that doesn't mean to say that we have to unburden ourselves on people, but if we have something against a particular person that we've held for years, we should go and make it right with them. So where we can, again, I think, I think the issue is that sometimes... Uh, the people are in a place where we can't no, that's go, right, go and see. And, and, but then I think it's the attitude of heart because it, it, it does seem to say in what we call the Lord's Prayer, if I ask the Lord for forgiveness, but in my heart I'm not forgiving somebody, again, th there is a problem there. Yes. And so even if physically I cannot go and forgive that person, cannot go and, and deal with it, my heart needs to say yes. Yes. I, 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 I do. I mean, I think that is true, isn't it? Mm. It's got to start with an attitude of heart. But then if it's possible to deal with it yes. personally, do you deal with it also with the person? Some years ago, I had serious witchcraft practiced on me uh, through leading people out of the occult. People were very angry with me because I led a certain person away from the occult. And there were serious witchcraft practiced on me. But fortunately, I knew all about it. Now, what do I do? Do I hate the people who did it to me? That's their belief system. That's what they've been brought up to, to learn. So I had to forgive them. 
No, I wasn't going to throw my hands around him and say, and kiss him on the cheek and say, well, that's all right, you can do what you like to me. Yeah. But I had to forgive him spiritually because evil begets evil. Mm. And if we increase evil through unforgiveness, we're making a bad situation even worse. Mm. Uh, with regards of secrets, I don't think a husband and wife should have secrets. Right. I, I do believe that. Yeah. You know, and I told my wife when I married her all about my past. I never held a thing to her mm -hmm. because I didn't want somebody else saying. To tell her. Tell her. Yes. Far better it comes from me. Yeah. We're running out of time. Just sorry. very quickly. No, no, don't be sorry. sorry. I mean, it's very good stuff. But uh, um, uh, we, we, we have uh, Nadia who, who considers that she, she suffers a lot from arthritis. And a lot of people mm -hmm. tell her it's due to unconfessed sin. However... She confesses her sins daily, and, and so can this really be a, a, an issue for her? Mm. In, 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 in other words, people are saying something, but she's saying, no, I, I, I come no. before the Lord every day. She, she doesn't really need to take that on, does no, she, from no. that point of view? I'm an arthritis sufferer, and I've confessed all my sins to the Lord. The Lord has healed me of arthritis. I have healing from arthritis. Mm -hmm. When I was first diagnosed some years ago, I couldn't shut my hands. I couldn't even walk. Uh, the Lord healed me. I accepted his healing in advance. And I think you should accept the fact that you're healed, Nadia, and just walk in faith mm -hmm. from this day forward. And don't listen to people who will tell you that your illness is because you have unconfessed sin or generational sin or lots of whatever. Mm. Mm. You know, uh, sometimes Christians look for an easy answer that fits into their belief system. Mm. That's right. And, and we put them, then we put that on somebody yeah. and we make it worse for That's them. That's right. Yeah. Hey, Michael, I, I, I think we got through three questions. Oh, did we? Um, oh, yeah, right. bless well, you very much. You do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, 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 we're going through it. We're, we'll revisit this yeah. at some point. Uh, next week, um, 6th of May, uh, Dave Brown's back. We'll be dealing <coughs> with uh, more with Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, etc. So do stay with us for that time. See you then. In the meantime, the Lord bless you real good. Bye for now.